Welcome to Happy Hour Holidays. I'm your host, Manny Fresh. We got our call, Sean Fabre. And in studio today, we got web developer, entrepreneur, uh, owner, one of the owners of Funko Chases, Chris Ellis. How are we doing, Chris? Good, man. How are you guys today? Pretty good, man. Feeling good, man. We're really happy to have you in here. And what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about this. We're going to be talking about PSA or graded cards or raw cards, how to make this into a business. And Chris and his partner have done a great job making this into another business that they have created. And it's very profitable if you know what to do. And how did you guys get into this whole training cards? Because I know you guys were doing the Funkos yep. and kind of doing the signatures with a lot of celebrities and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, it was one of my favorites. I've been you know, collecting football cards since I was young. So this was something I was super interested in. Well, Dave's brother was always involved in it and a big, big, big time collector. And and he always talked to us about, you know, if you're going to sell collectibles, sell all kinds of collectibles, be a collectibles dealer and and get involved. But truthfully, I think this was Dave's idea um, because of just ease when it came down to it. You've seen a Funko Pop. Everybody knows what these silly little things look like. And then when you get them autographed and you encase them in these hard plastic containers, Shipping them and storing them is is a lot of space, a lot of room. We've yeah. got about 500 signed fo- sign back in there, taking up a 12 by 10 room. I've got like 700 of these taking up a shelf. <laughs> so <laughs> when it comes down to it, I mean, this is way less space. This is um, these are are as collectible, if not more so nowadays than the um, the Funko Pops are, just because Funko's gone through some some issues with itself. Um, and, and it's upper management, but the sports world is, is, is they, it's called fanatics for a reason. The company knows what their people are like. Yeah. The people are fanatical when it comes to sports. You've got people that just watch, then you've got people that live for it and they are the collectors of, of long-term memorabilia. Yeah. Um, so this was just another way to go about that. And then watching, I mean, uh, watching one of the Netflix series, uh, yeah. with Goldfin, I think it was, yeah, is yeah. it Goldfin? Yeah. Uh, um, yep. they, I mean, you could, I mean, we're talking about upper $2 million for a, you know, a triple logo LeBron card. Yep. So, I mean, yep. it's crazy how high these cards, it's almost like, like playing the lottery. I mean, you buy a box and you could hit something big yep. and then there's there's a breakdown after that, right, Chris? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. it doesn't just go, hey, I, I got this card. What comes after, hey, I cracked open this card. I got a good card. Now, what's your options? Well, it, you've got a lot. So yeah. yesterday, just for um, sake of, of being able to show it on here, I cracked a series two box of tops that just had hit the shelves not long ago. These are the 2024 baseball cards. You've got cards in there that are the very basic, simple, everyday um, card that are just your your everyday card. These are cards that the kids would collect that would end up in the spokes of bicycles back in the day and all those kinds of in the, things. In the collector world, yep. what do we call them, Chris? Uh, the bases. Uh, they are bases, and yeah. honestly, what we call them in our office is usually trash. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> we've shred them up and used them to pack boxes of good cards. So, I mean, it's, I'm not lying. It's terrible. But you can end up with thousands upon thousands of base cards, and for some people, that's what they want to collect. They're going to collect that simple base. They want the base set. They want one card of everybody in the entire set. Then you're going to have all the inserts that come in these things, which are going to be these t- types of, of cards here. You're going to have rookie inserts. You're going to have special inserts that are the 35th anniversaries or the or the this or the that. Whatever those inserts happen to be, these are the stars of the MLB um, that that they happen to do. You've got inserts that are um, – actually, I didn't bring a PSA insert, but um, – You're going to have all the the different things that are put in there. Then you've got variations of the base cards. That's where you start to get into the more special stuff. So the variations are going to look like the base card. They're going to look just like that everyday 35th anniversary. This is a variation. Yep, there you go. So this is a variation on on the base 35th anniversary that is just a silver kind of sparkly card. And it's got a name that Topps gives them. They all come up with these fun names. Then you go up to the next step up, which is going to be the green. These are in uh, again, then they're turned around and numbered. So this one is a number 64 of 99, meaning there's only 99 of this specific card ever made. Then we pulled out of that same box of to 50. 
This one's a 35 to 50 of uh, an all-star, Spencer Strider, who's actually a very good Atlanta Brave, having a good season this year. So that was probably – those two were the biggest hits in the box. When it comes to the numbers, Chris, mm-hmm. what what's the best number to have? Because I asked you when we when you first came in, it was like, all right, what's the best number to have? So numbers are, are, are kind of a strange thing. So the biggest number that people would want would be a jersey match. So, uh, hypothetically speaking, let's talk about CJ Stroud. Everybody knows this guy. Everybody's after this guy. What you'd be looking for in a numbered card on CJ Stroud is a number seven. You would be, you'd be looking specifically for his Jersey number to match. So a seven of a seven of seven would be fantastic. A seven of 10, a seven of 15, obviously the higher number that are available, though less those are necessarily worth, but a Jersey match is always worth more than just any other number. The others that tend to be ones that are looked after and and gone after tend to be what's called bookends, the one or the 99 of one to 99. Uh, the, the ends, so to speak. The number one card, which I think that's what this one was. No, there was one that, uh, oh, yeah, uh, the Joker, Joker shark. Yeah. This one I pulled out of a select box of basketball, and it is a 1 to 99. It is number one. So this is a bookend. This will go off for grading because it's a bookend simply. Otherwise, if it was a normal 90 to 99, it would just be a card that we would sell raw. Gotcha. So I noticed that you don't have all these cards in sleeves. I do not. Um, a lot of the base cards we're going to not sleeve up. Uh, a lot of the, even the variations and variants and things like that, cards of value, anything under about $10, we're going to leave out of sleeves. Because these things are called penny sleeves, these little plastic things. This is what you protect your sleeve, your, your stuff in, and they are exactly that. They cost about a penny to do. But a top loader, which is a harder plastic piece um, that is going to protect these things in a box much better, are about $0.10, cents, $0.11 cents a piece depending on how you buy them nowadays. Uh, we buy them by the thousand, so they turn out closer to the 10 cent range. Um, but consequently, if you have, like we do, over 10,000 cards or like some of the even larger people online that are selling that are have you know half a million cards for sale, you can tie up a lot of money very, very quickly in plastic. How many cards came in that box that you just showed us a second ago? Okay, so this was a, a – Tops is is kind of an oddball. They actually give out a lot of cards in their boxes. This was a – this had 24 packs of 20 cards, if I remember. So 480 right. so cards. 60, 16 packs of 14 cards. So That's 224 cards. This was a $55 box. But Tops puts a lot of cards in their box. The more expensive cards, the um, like what you pulled this one out of, yeah. the prisms. This is a prism variation. So the base card doesn't have all this pretty stuff in the background. It would just be a, a picture of a field or something of that nature. This is a variation. Um, these cards come in boxes that are usually boxes of about 25 to 40 cards for 25 to $50 if you're looking in Walmart. Now, if you're buying from... Panini directly, or you're buying from uh, somebody that uh, is a wholesaler or retailer for Panini. Uh, uh, David Adams is a big card one online, uh, but eBay's got thousands of these guys that sell the raw boxes. There's so many different boxes that you can buy. You've got hangers, you've got fat packs, you've got blaster boxes, you've got mega boxes. All four of those are sold at your local Walmart, your local Target, your local sports store. If, if you they can find them. Get them, if you can get there before the collect, yeah, the, the resellers. Um, then you go to hobby boxes. Hobby boxes tend to be the entry level that are sold either directly from the manufacturer or by the the people that have a wholesale account with them. So, as a retailer, we look to try and get our best bang for our buck. So, a hobby box, for example. The, um, the newest cards to come out were the Optic Football, 2023 Optic Football. I gave you a couple of simple yeah. base cards out of that. I think you probably got a few. You can yeah, show these guys while I'm talking. Yeah. So these just came out. The blaster boxes were released a little early at our local Walmarts. It was a, a mistake on their part, <laughs> but that <laughs> happens. Um, but they were released very recently by Panini. They are now for sale everywhere that you can buy them online. But the day they came out at Walmart, they were $29.99 yeah. for a blaster box. There were about 50 cards, 45, 50 cards in the box. They were, like I said, $29.99 there. But they were gone so fast that now those boxes are being resold, sealed for $60 to $65 a box. That's a specific collector. That's a specific reseller. They don't care about breaking the boxes. They don't care about what's inside of them. They care about making a profit on the box itself. 
Um, and that's that's a way to do it. There's definitely an option there. There's a you got to strike while the iron's hot with that one because the minute that they're out there or people have hit the big hits, the one of ones, the 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 big heavy duty cards, it's not as exciting. And those prices of those boxes will drop straight off. You'll you can walk into any Walmart in any any state in this union and see clearance boxes of cards for twelve dollars. Those are old cards that have been there, but all the good stuff's already been found. So there's you're, you're chasing nothing inside there. You're going to find a bunch of stuff that's not worth much. Um, but when you get up into the hobby boxes, these are sold directly to um, wholesalers uh, that have direct Panini accounts. And or have direct, uh, you know, upper deck accounts, depending on what you're doing or tops accounts, depending if you're going with them. Um, and they're going to those those are going to be something that you have to get through one of them. None of the manufacturers of cards, including Fanatics, who is getting all the new NFL rights here in the next, I think, year um, because Panini lost them. Oh, wow. What a coup that was. Um, but anyway, th even with them, they're not taking any new retail applications at all, not even standing brick and mortar stores. So if you were thinking about opening a collectibles shop and wanting to sell uh, Panini products in your store, you would have to show them that you've had five to 10 years of selling their product already before they'd even consider you. And then you'd be in line be behind several hundred to several thousand other applicants that are trying to get their wholesale license to buy. It's, it's an so insane. Is this, so is this a, so I, guess, I guess what I was asking when I asked how many sorry. cards yeah. were in that box. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. We how much it. money are you going to make from that one 264 cards? Yeah. That's okay. So I mean, you want to break even, right? You said yeah. $55. So yeah. So this is a $55 box. On average, how much would you make? I mean, you said that you only got two good cards. Out I got two. Well, I got two bangers. 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 So here's the kick. We sell on eBay. So I scan a lot of cards that I wouldn't necessarily put in a retail environment because we can scan them in using that Fuji scanner that I can provide you the link for so you can show. It is It scans upwards of three to 500 cards a minute, depending on the resolution and how fast you are at loading the machine. And it scans both sides of the cards. You guys have seen it work. We've seen it. You've seen it at work. So we'll sell a lot more cards than, say, a card shop would. A card shop is going to be nothing but these slabs. Yeah. They're going to have nothing but good stuff that they can make decent money on that is that is worthwhile. Me, on the other hand, I can, I've can. i got 10,000 cards listed. We can sell. I, I'll sell anything well, let, let, Let's get back on this. track, though, right? Okay. So, so, this, so you put the 264 cards through the Fuji scanner. Right. And on average, you're probably looking at making a couple thousand, a couple hundred, oh, tens no, not, of dollars. I, I wouldn't even say in it's terms that of much. Profit, it in turns terms a profit. profit. So the base cards. Like these two bangers you got, how much are those worth? Well, I, I didn't look them up yet because I, I honestly just got these yesterday and I haven't had a chance to. But the Spencer Strider um, to 50, this is a 35th anniversary card. It is number 35 of the set. So it's a number match as far as that goes. He doesn't have his number on the front of the card, so I don't know what number he wears. Um, I would love it if it was 35. That would just be fantastic because <laughs> it would be a triple hit. But um, so this card, raw, is probably a $15 to $50 card, just as a, a wide range. Now, when you it say depends. raw, what do you mean by raw? Just like this. So packaged up in a top loader and sold just the way it is. Where you go from raw is into this different type of loader, which this is a card saver. This is what you send them to PSA or CSG or any of the other uh, companies that you want to use for your grading. We recommend PSA simply based on as far as sports cards, they are the most recognized and um, they're the highest reputation as far as in the buyer's world. So the PSA um, is a grader. It is right? a grader. They are a grader. So they have all kinds of different accounts you can set up with them. And we'll go over that here in a minute. But so you would put it in a in one of these um, and it would come back in one of these. These are sealed. They are protected as well as anything. I've had to crack these things open. And I can tell you it takes a pair of tile cutters and two screwdrivers. And you got to be really careful not to damage the card getting it out. Um, but we had two that were two that were graded that were um, uh, mislabeled. And rather than sending them back, we just decided to crack them and sell them raw. 
Uh, it wasn't worth the time waiting. So um, having to get in and crack those things is, is a nightmare. Yeah. But with the grading, that's you know that's where those come back. So if I graded these two cards and they came back, and they came back gem, mint, gem ten. mint tens, the best cards that they could possibly be. These are probably somewhere between I'd say about a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars on that one. This one's numbered to ninety nine. No jersey match, no anything crazy like that. Unless the guy were nope, sixty four. I have forty four. Um, probably forty, maybe fifty bucks because he's not. Uh, Joe Musgrave's a good player. He's not a great like he's had a, a long history with the Padres and the Astros, but he's no you know he's no all star. So you're looking at making somewhere in the neighborhood of two hundred percent to four hundred percent return on just buying that box on this box on this specific box. Is that now, if average? I had bought or? eight of these, I would have probably averaged out closer to about a hundred to one hundred and twenty percent over. Oh, really? So it, it comes down to bulk purchasing. Um, and this is where you kind of told me you wanted to go was how do you get into this where you can get the best the best product. So the best way to buy these is in is by the case, not by the box. So if you go to Walmart, you're going to find them on the shelf. They're in the boxes. They've already been broken out of cases. They were never in their cases even when they got to Walmart. They've been they've been opened up and shoveled around by the distributor that distributes them. It is not Walmart or Target that distributes these. It is a local distributor, and they are the ones that come in and even stock the shelves. Walmart and Target have nothing to do with it. Um, so those cases are already broken. So the best way to get cards, especially the more expensive, more, more collectible cards, is to get the, um, the case, the whole case sealed from Panini, from Upper Deck, from Tops. And the reason you do that is, is you have these things called case hits. Case hits are exactly what they sound like. In a case of 20 boxes of optic hobby or optic blaster boxes, there's a downtown or a, uh, I forget what it's called. What's but a it, downtown? So a downtown is the highest, it is the highest sought after card in the optic collection. And it's guaranteed in a case. It's guaranteed. There's a guaranteed case hit per case. So they've got usually three different things that'll be a case hit. A, a downtown is one of them um, in that in that particular one. There's another one in there that looks like it's been painted with uh, in watercolor. I forget exactly yeah, what they those, call right? it. It has they're a little really, town or yeah, something. Yeah, like exactly. That. They're beautiful cards. Mm. They're not what I would personally collect, but they are extremely rare, which therefore makes them collectible. And in some case hits, there's things like uh, you'll get um, – uh, a guaranteed one of one, you'll get a guaranteed two of 15, you'll get a guaranteed How autograph. Case you'll hits get things go like for. That. So a full, uh, well, the case hit like a downtown. Um, so we've sold several downtowns recently and anywhere graded, if they're graded PSA nine or PSA 10, anywhere from a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollars. If you happen to hit one of the big ones. How much are the cases? Uh, that's where you get into the big money. It depends on what you're buying. <laughs> a, a case of blaster boxes from Panini, take the retail price of, of $29.99 times 20, your $600 case. They're going to give you about a 10% discount. It's going to be somewhere around 600, you know, 550, 570. So you really could make money every time you bought a yes. case every yes. single time. Yeah. But the, but the yeah. case hit could be a player that's not that popular. No, but it could be a break even though. You could end up breaking even, right? There's, so there's the like. Manny brings yeah. up a very, very good point. So these things they'll say, they'll all say, um, you've got something, but in let's this wait box. until after the break. <laughs> oh, I was going to, I was going to plug it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, exactly. We'll wait. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Yeah. All right. Well, if it's, you want to check crazy. out Chris's store, it's uh Funko chases on eBay. They got a ton of cards, a ton of collectibles. Uh, you know, I've obviously purchased cards from them, you know, so, <laughs> so, you know, yeah. so I'm like, <laughs> I'm into this, you know, too. I'm looking at it as an investment, but make sure you like comment and subscribe. And we appreciate all the holidays. There's following us on Instagram and all the major socials. We'll be right back. All right, guys, and we're back with Happy Hour Holidays here talking about the card trading collectible industry where you were getting a sneak peek and how to be successful in this industry. And then and you brought up right before the break, what if they're not good Case hits. C case yeah, because you can buy the case. Popular, you can buy right? the case. You're guaranteed a case hits. But what if you get somebody who's a nobody? Well, let's. All right. So and you were talking let, about 2021. Yeah. 2021 was a great example. So you in 2021, you could buy. You bought these cases, and everybody was after them. They went hobby boxes that sold retail for three hundred dollars were reselling for eight hundred. 
But there were four good quarterbacks drafted early in that draft that all were having good years by the time these cards came out. Everybody looked pretty promising. Now, all of a sudden, three years later, only one of them is still starting in the NFL. And that's uh, Trevor Lawrence. And that's, and that's Trevor Lawrence. And he just signed a long contract, but he's still just kind of an above average quarterback. Yeah. He's not he's he not what everybody – no, he was still, what, two rounds away, right? But uh, even well, still, I mean, yeah, he was playoff bound. I, I think he's going to have a great career. I think he's got a long career ahead of him. He's, he's got, got a lot of talent. He kind of let it, let the uh, let him down this year because they were like, what, nine and something? I thought they, nine and six. I thought and he went to they, the they, AFC they, championship, they kinda, didn't they? No. no. I think it was, it was the NFC Divisional. It was no, the Ravens. Went divisional. Yeah, it was Ravens and, and Kansas City. In the, in the no, block. well, no. yeah, it was yeah. Ravens and Kansas City. But before that, Jacksonville, well, it wasn't even Trevor Lawrence's fault. That Agnew. He, f- yeah. he fumbled right at the one yard line, yep. and that would have given him the go ahead touchdown. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, let's. I mean, you get back to it. so if you get a bad case hit, yeah. there's always that possibility. So the, that's the, that's kind of the point. All right. So if you go to the Don Russ, which is the same as the Optic Collection, the car, full card set of these is 400 cards, meaning that there's 400 players uh, that have a card in that box in that set. There's a downtown. There's money downtowns of every one of those. Yeah. There's a one of one of every one of those. So if you hit a one of one CJ Stroud out of this last year, then you're happy. You were on a million dollar hunt, yeah. <laughs> especially if it was a one of one craziness. Like if it was a one of one downtown auto, you know, something stupid like that, there were companies out there paying half a million dollars for those cards. There's a there was a hit with Wemby um, coming out of the the basketball series that came out when prisms hit. There was a one of one black prism autograph of Wembenyama. So there was literally going to be one card ever made. Uh, Da Card World, which is David Adams, um, had a one million dollar bounty on it. So if you found it and offered it to them, million dollars. What what company? in your hand? Dave and Adams card. But you, now well, they're they're one of these online retailers of these products. And they, they just wanted the card. They wanted, pay a million dollars. They would pay a million dollars because they knew oh, they could shit. take it to Sotheby's and turn around and turn it into probably a million and a Who half. Who was the player? Wembenyama. Fuck is Wembenyama. Oh He's my a- God. Where have you been? Yeah. <laughs> Only the best number one pick out of the NBA draft. Oh, it's In basketball. a long time. Yeah. <laughs> He's this guy right here, yeah. <laughs> and your listeners all probably know who he is and are thinking that you're kind of not in <coughs> contact with the world anymore. I don't like basketball or baseball. I'm so. not a big basketball fan myself, but you watch this guy's highlights, and it actually makes you want to watch basketball. Oh, it's I, ridiculous. I the guy was getting that. triple doubles where, you know, normally a triple double in the basketball world is, is more than 10 points, more than 10 assists, and more than 10 rebounds. This guy was getting them with more than 10 points, more than 10 rebounds, and more than 10 blocks. Wow. He's huge. He's seven foot four. He's fast on his feet. He's ridiculously, ridiculously talented. And I just wish the best for the kid. Where do they announce these bounties at? So on their websites, right on the, right on their websites. So anyway, getting back to Manny's question yeah. about the, the bad case hit. So if you've got a one in 400 chance, you could hit the Wemby. You could hit the CJ Stroud or you could hit Mark Brunel from, <laughs> you, because he has a card in the optic series. You could hit. Well, Mark Brunel is no longer in the NFL. But, I understand. Yeah, but there's, but look, there's, there's, there's Johnson right here. There's 50, 50 to seventy five retirees in there. Really? Now there's there. Oh yeah, there's Dan Marino. Keyshawn. There's some really nice ones. But what I was I was cataloging my cards this morning, and I cataloged a Mark Brunel. <laughs> you could hit a Mark Brunel one of one, and and you've got a twenty five dollar card. Congratulations on your case hit. So I mean, there is some danger. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is not. So this is this is just like so you're saying one out of, <laughs> you're saying one out of four hundred, right? One out of four. What happens if you buy four hundred cases? You're rich. Yeah, you're right. Uh, well, no, you're saying what is it? That's blaster boxes, bro. Now you talk cases of the actual things that have the nice hits in them, the the, the down the big downtown, the big hits in them. Two hundred, three hundred thousand, right? Uh, they're they're no, they're. I mean, not. I'm not talking the the high high end. Yeah, I'm talking like the hobby boxes. The Let's hobby say box. you buy the hobby boxes. It's got five autos. It's got uh, it's got a series, probably fifteen numbered cards per box, things like that. And there's now twenty of those in a case. Those are seven thousand dollar boxes. What? Those are seven thousand dollar cases. Holy so shit. like you that's 10, how much they retail cases. for. That's how much you have to pay to get that case. Wow. Now there's the ones Manny's talking about, which I've shown him yeah. in his dreaming world because we've had this <laughs> conversation. If you want to collect this stuff, 
or if you want to get into reselling this stuff, you have to choose what level you want to be at. Because let's face it, like anything else out there in the world, you can be a Kia dealer or you can be a Maybach dealer. <laughs> the fact is, is you can buy the Kia of cards and, and resell decent products that a lot of people want. And make a good living. And make a good living. Or you can, but you're going to sell a hundred thousand. Well, yeah, because you're going to sell a hundred thousand of them a year at a, at a dollar profit. Or you could buy the fifteen to twenty five thousand dollar box of cards that has five cards in it, and you can resell each one of those for a ten thousand dollar profit or a five or five to ten thousand dollar profit, and sell fewer things but invest about the same amount of money. It's just in where you want to put your risk. Do you guys want to pull together? Uh- 33, 33 each and uh, buy one of these boxes. I'll, I'll go ahead and keep selling Kias. Yeah. yeah. I like the Kia game. Yeah, I'm, I'm Kia starting game. to get into a little like Honda yeah. Toyota. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. I'm, I'm okay with yeah, this, this because when it comes down to it, I, I, there's, there's, there's more collectors at this level. Yeah, there's because not everybody can afford to buy a car that's, you know, $3,000, $4,000. There's 150 people in the world buying a million dollar card. There's 150 million people buying a $2 card. That makes so sense. So I would much rather stick between our, our highest value card I think we sold has been somewhere in the $1,500 to $2,000 market. And it was a crazy hit. This one was what, 1000 That one was seven fifty. Seven fifty. So, so what, what's the most expensive card you got on the table? Right the, the one Manny handed me. So that's the <laughs> seven, yeah, the 750 This the <laughs> CJ Stroud variation, silver, uh, silver variation, which was a huge hit at the time, pulled out of a $50 box. So that's again kind of that point. Let's say you can the, hit this. Yeah. The only way to also, also get a also, PSA ten. Yeah. 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 You yeah. can also hit Mark Brunel. The, uh, the only, so, no offense, Mark. The if you're only way <laughs> for that card to raise in value currently, right now, as it stands, is for CJ Stroud to sign it. But Correct. he but he can't but sign he can't it. Sign that because we have to crack in, it. You got to crack it open right. in order for him to sign it. Correct. So you would actually not if want it that was to signed. If it was signed though, and if then it came back. Gem min ten again. You'd have to do a double gen, double yeah, ten on yeah, that because you'd have to. You'd have to. You're going to certify it twice. You're going to. You're going to actually do three things. You're going to do what's called a DNA test, which is the certification that the autograph is legitimate. Then you're going to grade the autograph as to the quality of the autograph compared to his Wait other autographs on so the world. They, they then grade you're going to the, grade the card. They grade the autograph. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you what? can send in a card, and and uh, the buyer beware. This is this is one thing I will say very very quickly. Buyer beware. If you are buying cards online and you are buying anything from a grading company, there are multiple ways to grade cards. You can grade the card and authenticate the autograph. The, therefore, then the autograph is said, yes, this is a true autograph and this is a Gem Mint 10 card. That does not mean that is a Gem Mint 10 autograph. Mm -hmm. You can also get a card that was sent in with an autograph on it and they just grade the autograph and it comes back a Gem Mint 10 autograph. But if you don't look real closely, and see that there's not two tens on there, you might be thinking that the card's a 10 and the card could be a six wow. with a good autograph on oh, it. Shit. So you gotta be really, really careful. But yes, you can, you, you, so if you get a physical in-person autograph that wasn't done by the manufacturer, because those are certified by the manufacturer if they come that way. Yeah, yeah. But if you're, at a, if you're at a baseball game and you get Ellie De La Cruz to come over and sign your card, hold on to it for life because the kid's going to be an all-star for the rest of his life and he's going to retire and he's going to go right to the Hall of Fame. First ballot. Promise. He's a rookie this year. Still going to be a first Damn, ballot Hall of Fame. Kid, kid is throwing, kid's a shortstop throwing 107 miles an hour to first base. Wow. He had, in April, he had eight home runs and seven, 18 stolen bases. Wow. He is ridiculous. Six foot five, 200 well, pounds. Six, six, foot five? Five? six foot five, 200 pound shortstop. Jeez, he's ridiculous. He, anyway, he's, this kid is built for baseball. So, so you got a ten ten. So you got if you got. And let's a, call the one that you showed him that was seven hundred fifty dollars. Sure. Let's call that a ten ten autograph. Was a ten card is a ten mm -hmm. again signed. How much could that card go? For? That was probably a ten thousand dollar card. Damn, really? Yeah. The oh, autograph, especially shit. with CJ Stroud, because what's up, CJ? Well, Come sign this card. Here, here's the thing: <laughs> CJ Stroud didn't enter into an agreement to sign cards with Panini. When they first released cards, no, but so but the like first if Manny bunch saw of him, cards, but if Manny saw them, right, yeah. that's a different story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, the, but that would actually be worth even more, simply based on there aren't any. Oh yeah, because that, that card when yeah. it came out 
there weren't auto. They, there may or may not have been. Because he did not. Because he didn't sign early. Yeah. He didn't uh-huh. come into that NIL, the old NIL agreements in college, but the, the the professional agreements are with these companies. He was one of the latest to sign an agreement. So his whole first batch of cards, there were no autographs available. Wow. So that was. But, and also the, signing the case won't do anything. Won't no. do anything because they're not going to certify it. You can't encase the case. Yeah, yeah, you can't encase the case. I mean, can you though? You probably could. I mean, you could. I don't know the PSA would do it. <laughs> yeah. And therefore, you're you know you're certifying an un- a certified. Plus, plus I, I mean, all he signed I mean, was the case. The car, not the car. Jim and he grabs the car and goes, "Oh shit, I bent it all up." Yeah, no, you you'd have to literally put it on the table and say, "Sign carefully." And <laughs> and and so I mean, just to give you an idea on how this can go, it can go very very badly. So there was a gentleman not that long ago, here in the last few months, um, that is suing Tom Brady. He had a football from one of the Super Bowls. I don't remember exactly which one from New England. He had the had the entire team that was on the field that day sign it so far. And the only one he was lacking was Tom's. And he showed up at an event where Tom was signing autographs, charging money and signing autographs. And this Tom apparently didn't take his time with the autograph. And it came out looking like a blob of crap. And he then ruined this guy's multi-thousand dollar article of memorabilia. Oh, so multi so multi million? I, well, like I wouldn't tens even be, of thousands, I of wouldn't thousands. even begin to guess on that because I mean you're talking about some greats in football. I mean I remember that they were on those teams. I so. remember watching Sandlot and uh you know the neighbor mm-hmm. James Earl Jones, he had a baseball signed by Babe Ruth and yeah. everybody in that uh that Yankee uh yep. ball club. Yep. Didn't ruin that value. It didn't. It's but also a movie. If you, if, you, <laughs> if you couldn't read the signature or if the grading company is going to grade that after the fact, because he's not going to send it in for grading after every autograph. He's going to send it in for grading after it's done. As long as he has and a video of Tom doing it. It doesn't though. matter. It's verified. But they're going to grade the autograph and it's going to come back like a four based on his other autographs that are in the world. And now you've taken what may be a fifty or $100,000 item and you've devalued it significantly because it's one of his worst what if autographs. Tom's, what if Tom's so. signature was never on there then? That's kind would of- Would the ball still be worth the same or less? No, it would be worth- It would. It would. That's a good question. And that's, I mean, and that's probably it, the question the court's going to argue yeah. back and forth. Because it's lawyers like, well, are if Tom didn't thing, sign so. it, is it worth more than now that it's signed by Tom? That he Tom? signed it, did he because, devalue it? Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't know if he devalued it, bro. Mm-hmm. Because because Tom Brady's uh, just autograph period on a, on a Super Bowl- Football has got to be worth more than if his name was left off. Imagine having everybody on the Chicago Bulls team. And then, uh, you know, you have a basketball. It was uh, 98, MJ's last uh, uh, final. Everybody signed it. MJ didn't sign it. And then, boom, what? You're telling me that that basketball is going to be worth more than if MJ signed it and fucked up his signature? I think having MJ's signature on there is what completes – the collectible. Now, I'm not a collectibles expert. I'm not either when it comes down to that part of it, and I'm no lawyer. So when it comes down, I'm there, I know the guy's suing. He's very upset How because much he suing for? I, I think a couple hundred grand, just trying to get the money back out of it yeah. um, that he that he feels he's losing by the devaluing the overall. But and there's some, I'm sure, some spite money there, and of course the lawyers get their whatever Damages. percentage. So, I, I, yeah. they're uh, four hundred dollars an hour. Well, I mean, they're going to get there. It's going to be a settlement. <laughs> it would be a damages suit, so it'd be like an auto accident. So it's going to be a percentage of the yeah. total plus fees. But yeah, I mean, same idea. They're going to get they're going to get a big chunk of it. And Chris, uh, so, the, anyway, the, the a PSA if, if is it, now yeah, when it comes yeah. to autographs. I mean, PSA. You know, when you say, hey, they're really good at obviously grading the cards as far as signatures, what company would you go with as far as number one? Um, so it depends on the product, yeah. but if it's, if you're, if you're certifying autographs on sports memorabilia, PSA still hands down is the best one out there. Gotcha. Um, and, and, and that goes with whether you had it signed live in person or yeah. whether you had it signed, um, uh, or whether it's signed from the manufacturer. The reason I say that is PSA has probably been doing the business the longest. They are the largest company. Therefore, they have the largest database of information and certification information, and they catch the they catch the, the foul actors. Um, they've started uh, real recently. PSA just announced actually, I think yesterday or the day before, that they're going to now start providing notes of why they graded the card the way it is when you get your grades I back. I think that's a good idea. So it's, they used to do it. Then they stopped because I think they were getting a lot of blowback. But now people are like, no, we need to know because you need to make us better at collecting because I don't want to send you things that aren't worth grading. 
Um, you know, you don't want to send a card if it's, and, and they use laser measurement tools and they use micrometers that they're going down and looking at these things with microscopes that they're looking at these cards with. If you ever want to just really go down a rabbit hole of boredom and science, so if you're look up, look up some of the <laughs> PSA, uh, videos on how they actually go through their grading process on it's, YouTube, right? They oh, it's, it. it's ridiculous. Damn, I got to do that. It is ridiculous how much effort they put into them. And then their encasement process. Process, they just revamped and redid, and now these things are sonically sealed and even better than they used to be. Man, I, so. I always figured like if you're getting it straight from – if you get a case, mm -hmm. shouldn't they all be tens? They should, but no. 100% um, not, simply based on centering. So this is still a printed material. Um, so do you have a these, nine there? No, I don't, but these oh. are, these are tens. You, you don't buy ten nines, so oh. I don't, you don't, <laughs> have one. but I'm sure I could find a off center one here, but you're probably not going to see it close up enough, but this is a gem mint 10. So if you see the red, this one's easy because it's red, white, and blue. So you can see the spacing around the edges of that is all pretty uniform and they have to be pretty, pretty on center. That's a pretty badass card. Right. So they got to be pretty on center to be a gem mint 10. A mint nine, which is still considered mint in the world of collectibles. Is there a mint 10? The gem mint 10, mint nine, mint near mint eight is how the, the oh, it goes. Okay, okay. So um if you if you and and that's what that's where that other is gonna make us better. You're gonna look at a card and you know, my naked eye, I say that card's relatively well centered. But actually it's not. Top to bottom, it's off. If you take a look at it, you'll see top to bottom. There's this is a there's, base card. Right? That's a base card. Yeah. There's there's much less space at the bottom of the card than there is at the top of the card, yeah, and that, that is one right. But that fuck, is that's bro. a card that would come I back as a nine. It, though. I yeah. can see it though. That's yeah. a card that would come back as a nine, one hundred percent of the time. Maybe even an eight if they find something else wrong. <laughs> but so you, you wouldn't get that card graded. I wouldn't get that card graded. I I know enough now to not get that card graded. So that's where buying raw. It's a little, so if you're a collector, like you guys are, mm -hmm. what do you buy? Gem Intense. Gem Intense. Yeah. I'm not going to go and, through it. Right. I mean, right? Because I mean, even right. even if you crack the, let's say you crack the box, you crack the case, you still got to hope that it's a Gem Man 10. My God, that's good. Yeah, it's really good, um, man. So that's, <laughs> yeah, shout that's out a, to St. Pete Distillery. Yes. Yeah, uh, thank uh, you. Chef David, David Reyes. Uh, Daniel you, Reyes. David. 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 Daniel. D. Reyes. David Reyes. D. Reyes. <laughs> it's D. Reyes. Uh, your, his episode comes out today, um, June 27th. Um, but yeah, uh, he gave us that bottle. Yeah. Right wonder, really, it's really good Reposado. Jim Mint 10. That uh, is Jim Mint 10, And it's bro. actually yeah, numbered, it's and numbered. And numbered and autographed. By and the, technically, uh, it's by the, not a tequila, the right? It, it is not. And it's a color match. Yeah. It is. Yeah. hundred percent. Oh, it's going to that, Chris. Yes. So oh, like yeah, yeah, we got a minute. Yeah, minutes. the color match. We got a minute here. Okay. Let's do that after. Yeah. So when we get back, we'll we'll talk to Chris a little bit more about, hey, I got this really, you know, one of these really nice cards. What's the one that's going to be the, the one that's going to bring in the highest return? And we'll be right back to let you know which ones are the best ones and which ones are the ones to hold on to. And we're back to Happy Hour Holidays. You Italian knows, dude. You know, telling you the real shit that's going on in the world. We were talking My about. poor ancestors are rolling <laughs> over in their graves. <laughs> All right, so, we were, so, Chris, we were talking about. Color matches, because look, Color matches. now we're looking at these cards, right? You know, you got a Detroit Lions jersey with a green. You know, how do you get the best, you know, once you hit that that banger, how do you get the best banger out of all that? I mean, does it have to do with colors? It has does to it, do with the collector. Yeah. So things that are appealing <laughs> to the eye are always going to be things that are going to be collected heavily, because if you're going to display them, like you are planning to do with your Tom Brady, yeah. it's a beautiful card. You want them to you want them to pop. So this is an example of a red, white, and blue prism. So just kind of a simple prism from last year. They've been doing the red, white, and blue for a lot of years. But this is Tank Dell from 2023, his rookie card. But it's in the Houston's red uniform with the blue accents. So it actually comes up as what's called a color match. So it matches the uniform matches the colors of the card. Those tend to be visually appealing, and therefore they're looked at with a little more. Um, 
I don't know, a little more value. Yeah. I wouldn't say they're necessarily more valuable because they aren't. They aren't any more valuable than any mm-hmm. other red, white, and blue for the same level player or same anything else. Because when However, I look at this pink one, you right. know, with the blue, I mean, this is an appealing card. Stunning card. And it's for sale. And it's, it's rare. <laughs> it, it, the, the biggest thing that comes down to making a card valuable is rarity. So, and you and I have had this discussion, yeah. Manny. I, I told you, you can be one of five collectors. Yeah. You know, you can be the collector like us, where you buy everything, you collect it all, and you just see what you get, and you, and you have a good time, and you, you do your thing. You can be a collector that spends a god-awful amount of money and buys $10,000 to $50,000 cards and has a collection worth a million dollars. And you can be everybody in between. And there's cards out there for every level. Um, I mean, the millionaires that want to collect baseball cards can collect million-dollar baseball cards. There's plenty of of auctions that have gone in the last six months of some of the best guys from back in the 20s and 30s and 40s, the early days of baseball, that have sold cards for over a million plus. And those are PSA threes, twos, and fours. I mean, they're not, but cut their. 100 years old and now going back to the color matches mm-hmm. but let's think about this now we're we're opening up a new box of sure. let's say 2021 2022 and let's say you get a lawrence taylor a dan marino mm-hmm. but of this you know of this year you mm-hmm. know the 2021 sure. is that going to be more valuable now or obviously is it going to be more valuable in 1983 or 1984 when he came out way more valuable as a rookie card rookie so card. the reprints are exactly what they are you showed the Keyshawn johnson yeah, a little Keyshawn. while ago when it came down, when it comes down to it, a Keyshawn Johnson, re, uh, you know, rookie card from his first years out would be worth way more money. Mm-hmm. His even his um, live card from the year where they won the Super Bowl, you know, back in whatever the hell it was in two thousand eight, was 2002. it two thousand two? Two thousand two. Oh my god, I'm <laughs> so old. Um, you know, when when you know he was more popular and had a had a great year and those kinds of things. But the first year a card comes out, the rookie cards are definitely the chase when it comes down to it because there's only one year of them. They can reprint Yogi Berra on a card for the next 150 years. The only ones that are really going to be worth any big amounts of money are going to be rookies. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that goes with anything, baseball, softball, or baseball, hockey, it doesn't matter. I mean, like we were talking, there's even – you know, a golf, a golfer's first year, a rookie, and they do rookie card the golfers. A rookie Tiger Woods is worth a ton of fucking money. What about yeah. like a reprint print of say Michael Jordan for the twenty third anniversary, yeah. and you got twenty three out of twenty three numbered? Again, that comes down to that whole thing I was just talking about with rarity. If you if you cards that are rare are worth a good deal of money. Um, I have a Babe Ruth in there. That's a reprint of one of his, one of his cigarette cards from way back in the day. And it's numbered to 25, I think. And it's, it's worth a couple hundred bucks, but that's an iconic player in a limited reprint. So those are going to, you know, anything that you get with that is always going to be worth more money. Um, but not as much as a rookie card yeah. would be. I mean, obviously Jordan's rookie cards go for thousands upon thousands of dollars if they're in good shape. Then can you clarify what a rookie card is? Okay. So a rookie card, it depends on the sport. In, in Let's football, call it football. Yeah. In football, a rookie card is the year that the person starts in the NFL, right? They don't after have their to draft. be in their college uniform, they right? Did, no. In fact, Actually, they which can one be. is more valuable? They can be. Um, so I brought that for an exact yeah. example. Um, yeah, the Bryce Young. I, yeah, I do. I have. I, I have. Uh, yep, right there. Yeah. So I have the Bryce Young. This is, um, and I've got a regular, you know, regular Bryce Young. This is the Prism Collegiate set. And he's in his Alabama. He's uniform. in his Bama gear. Um, this is obviously a, a highly desired card by Alabama fans. Now it's a reasonably desired card by NFL fans, but not as much as the professional uniforms. The collegiate uniforms almost never are worth as much money. Um, And this is a PSA 10, Bryce Young. Uh, Hopefully he has a great year this year, but this is just a base prism. So it's nothing too, nothing too fancy. But I thought that, you know what? It's a nice card. It's a good hit. I'm going to case it and I'm going to make sure it's protected because seven or eight years from now, it might be worth a decent amount of money. Um, We sell a lot of collegiate uniforms to the states where the players came from. Um, I, you will see the labels. Uh, we'll see the mailing labels, of course, when we're sending them all out by eBay. So we kind of see where things go. And a lot of things go in the state where the where the, the team was, but then a lot of them go out of state to other, you know, other places, travel, 
people have grown up and moved all over the country and so forth. But when it comes to the collegiate uniforms, they tend to be going back to the home state. So essentially a rookie card is just the rookie year for an NFL player, <laughs> just the rookie year in which is their first year. Their, their, their draft year. Their so draft year. yeah. So this is a, this is a 2023 Bryce Young college. It does have the RC. This is considered a professional rookie card, an NFL rookie card. Then he's got the prof- the the prisms that would have come out or in all the other cards for that matter. That and those are, will go that, for more. They will go for a little bit more money, correct? Because, because they have a, a wider audience correct. other than just whoever likes Alabama, I guess. Well, I mean, Alabama's got a huge audience of its own, probably even more so than the Carolina Panthers do. But still, <laughs> um, sure. but still, there are you know the the when it comes to the collectability, most people are collecting NFL. There, most people are collecting um, NHL, not AHL. Most people are collecting. You know, the big sports, everything's got a card. I promise you, if you want to collect it, it's out there. Do porn stars have cards? Yes. 100%. <laughs> well, that um, was a quick yes. <laughs> 100 I, Well, I represent one, so I can, I, can, I, can, I can say that for fact. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah. You Jenna represent- Jameson has been a, a client of the guy that I work for that does the the cons and stuff like that. So I've, I've worked with. Oh, okay. You're talking times. about the conventions. Yeah. Yeah, you're, but you're she's not like still, her agent. No, 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 no. Well, she doesn't. She doesn't do that anymore. She she's got professional booking agents. She does speaking tours all over the country. She's brilliant. Um, but no, but they. I mean, yes, there are porn star cards. There are. We were talking about golf. There's wrestling. There's racing. There's soccer. There's if there's a sport out there. I mean, I, I, you might be hard pressed to find cricket cards outside of India, <laughs> but there's probably cricket cards. But uh, but of all the sports, what would you say? Be soccer. Well, what would you say brings the most value? It's because be I have seen, I you know, what these, huh? yeah, what? Soccer? Soccer no, the these, soccer, soccer has the number, the, the most fans in the entire planet. Yeah, Definitely yeah, the sure. most popular sport Maybe in the most entire viewed, planet. But, Absolutely. But as far as collected, oh, starting when? Because I would say let's over say, recently. Say, today. Today. Say, yeah, let's just say today. NFL. NFL, right? NFL. Um, I would say if you go over the life of like collectibles and cards, I would say baseball would have to have the lead because they've been making them for a lot longer. Yeah. I mean, you know, the cigarette companies put cards in the cigarette packs in the twenties. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, this was, this has been a long, long time. So I would say overall baseball's probably had a higher production level. But there's obviously a lot, there's a lot more players too. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, but as, as far as within the last couple of years, I would say the NFL's probably got the lock on the market as to the highest value. Have you looked into, to soccer cards at all have yeah. In- international prices that um, okay no with. we looked at uh we did not because we don't ship internationally too much just simply because the shipping tends to put us in a position where we're not you know it doesn't help anybody um we did sell a bunch of hockey cards to canada um to the canadian to the canadian America. but that's again continental america yes that's like you said but no when we were looking at uh soccer cards and the potential was actually we were looking uh specifically this year and we were looking to get the messy. uh yeah the messy cards out of miami so, you know, and then again, same thing in basketball. I don't, I don't have very many NBA cards, but I'll buy every, every box that I can buy that, get, that gives me a potential at a decent Wemby because they're worth a God awful amount of money because he's a fantastic player and, and he won rookie of the year. Should have won defenseman of the year. So, uh, yeah. I don't know anything about basketball. Who did end up winning? No idea. No idea I, 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 again, I didn't watch, I watched, I watched game four. Four, five, six, and seven of the finals, and that's only because I'm from Massachusetts yeah, and from Celtics Boston. won. So I wanted to see the series. What uh, are the cards that you're looking forward to uh, for this 2024 season? Are you looking for uh, some Caleb's, or you know you are? I'm looking for everything anybody wants to buy. How about that guy, Michael um, <laughs> Michael Fenix? I'm I'm looking for every rookie quarterback backup. that was drafted in the first round. Every single. So one. when it comes down to it, when you value these cards as far as retailability. The quarterbacks go first. 100% quarterbacks go first, and they go for the most amount of money. Um, Unless you're next, Jerry Rice or uh, – Next – Not even quarterbacks. Not even that. Any quarterback. Really? Honestly, touches the ball? Everywhere. Any starting quarterback in the NFL is going to go for more money than any starting receiver in the NFL. Um, and that's just hands down the way it's going to go. So then you're just hoping for quarterback variations. You're you're hoping for quarterbacks. You're hoping for the top five quarterbacks. You're hoping for the top five rookie cards. Um, you're looking for variants. You're looking for variations. You're looking for uh, inserts. You're looking for the special number. You're looking for autographs. Yeah. I mean. You guys had one that you showed me that had a patch of the jersey yep. and also a patch of the football. We had a patch of, we have a, we had one that was a football patch uniform patch and it was actually a patch where it was part of the number 
and the jersey, and it also was autographed. And, and you, um, you guys had them PSA graded, right? That, that was graded. That was, Did I you have any tens? Think that one came back as a PSA nine. Nine. Um, patch cards are difficult. I don't. I didn't bring any. Do people in here. actually want to buy those? Yes. There's a specific collector market for patch cards. And just for those of you who are not big into cards, patch cards are basically a card like this, except they're about 10 times as thick, and they have a cut-out piece of a uniform in them. Their uniform, uh, right? Uh, game worn, right? Not uh, in the NFL. Uh, so in the lower end, normal cards that you're buying um, at the at the store and, and the patches you're getting in there, they are just off of any jersey that, yes, it had to be – a team jersey. It technically had to have been in that player's possession at some point. It is not game worn. Uh, the only ones that do it in the general cards, as far as game worn, that I'm aware of, you can find them in tops. You can find them in Bowman on baseball, and you the upper deck hockey cards are all game worn. Um, so all the hockey cards come out with game worn basketball too, sport. right? Sometimes, all, yeah. sometimes, remember, sometimes uh, not. Like you're uh, talking about the triple logo. One. Yeah. So, all right. So, yeah, that's the other piece on patch cards. So, patch cards have a very different thing. So, you can get a patch of the uniform where it's just a swatch of cloth. And it'll be just one piece, one color of a swatch of cloth. You can get, like I got one for an uh, Aaron Judge uh, last year, and it had one of the pinstripes in it. Well, all right. That's a little nicer because it's a pinstripe. And it's, you know, they're, they're known yeah, for wearing their really. pinstripes. So, that was a little nicer. Um, then you can get pa uh, patch cards that are some of the more nicer, more expensive cards that'll have multiple colors of the uniform. So they'll have cut that patch from a place where there's multiple colors on it. The best patches out there are ones that have um, either a cutout or the full uh, lettering from the guy's name or from the logo itself, like from the Bengal or from the, the Jacksonville Jaguar, a piece of the Jaguar, or then the most sought after, which there can only be a couple of because they just don't have that many is the one with the NFL patch on it. Ooh, so that itty bitty little NFL patch that's over on their corner thing that's only about the size of a quarter, that they cut out completely and it goes into a usually one of one or to sometimes a one of 15. Um, and those usually are, are, you know, very expensive, <laughs> very, very, very expensive cards. What, Those are in the certified boxes I was showing you that are like two grand to five grand a piece. You know? What kind of advice could you give someone that's looking to get into this game, thinking to themselves, oh, my God, I'm going to make so much money. I mean, is that really uh, – well, let's go, go ahead and go, take it back. <laughs> stand, <laughs> stand, go. stand, go look in a mirror for a second <laughs> and, and say that to yourself a thousand times over. And then um, put your money where your mouth is because it takes money to make money. It's essentially a lottery at the end of the day. It's a different way. Like you were talking about, it's like stocks, bonds. Like, it's a I mean, risk investment. It's a risk. I mean, and this one's not so calculated like some of the other investments because you're buying a box and hoping for the best. Well, and, and if you're doing it to resell, if you're getting in this to resell, it is about volume. Um, it is, you've got to buy a lot of cards. And, and you're going – so you're going to buy – We've got probably thirty thousand dollars worth of stuff back there invested between all of between myself and Dave. Not his brother, completely different story. That's god awful amount of money back there. But um, when it comes down to it, if you're getting into it, you got to spend money to make money. I mean, this is every business in the world. You got to spend money to make money. The more you're willing to put up front, the higher quality product you're going to get. Like we talked about the Kia versus the Maybach, you're gonna you, you got the choice between. Do you want to try and make a lot of money per card or do you want to try and make a lot of money by, you know, selling a lot of cards? It's a lot more work to do a lot of cards, but it's a lot easier. But then you're going to have to go out and buy a lot of cards. If you want, we've got just over 10,000 cards for sale and I've got another probably 10,000 to scan. How many do you sell per day, would you say? Average between five and 10 a, car a day. Um, and the average sale value of those cards? Three to five dollars. Damn. So that's only like 15 bucks, bro. Yeah. But then you get the thousand dollar card, the five hundred dollar card that throws it in. We've sold, uh, I think, the last I looked was about twelve thousand dollars over the last ninety days. So four grand a month. So you're not but getting not, rich off of it. We're not getting rich. This is <laughs> this is a supplement. We do this because we enjoy it. We do it because it's fun. It is fun. Um, it we is have fun. a great time. The, the look. You buy one of these things, these are all wrapped up in little packets. One of the best, we, everybody loves breaking these things open. Yeah. We all love the thrill of that hunt. Yeah. Everybody in the market. There's guys that, that's how they make their living is doing breaking. 
they buy the boxes, they start a, a YouTube channel or a whatnot channel or an eBay channel, Actually, and they break and they break the cards open, selling the teams off to other people. They don't keep a single card, but the fact is, is that they just enjoy the damn break and they make their money that way. But I mean, talking about long term investments, I mean, Chris has one strategy which you could do to make it a business. But if you're looking for, you know, let's say you're not a swing trader and you're a long term trader that likes to hold, I mean, my my concept on it is to already buy them. You yep. know, that are already PSA, you know, Gem Men 10s. I'm going to hold this for a long time right. and hope that maybe in five to 10 years, I'm going to get a really nice number for this right. instead of trying to flip it. So there's another way where you can make some money, but it's going to be a long term hold. Or if they die. Well, it, and, and that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, no, no, no. Because if they die that. early in their career, then there's no reason their card's worthless yeah, because a, they didn't have a career. But if Pat Mahomes died like tomorrow and you had a Pat Mahomes rookie card that was signed, God forbid. Well, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, let's, we're not let's, hoping I mean, for you that. Know, uh, you told me not to knock on the desk, but let's knock on the wood. Um, so yeah, no. When it comes down to it, this is the risk is in still in both though, yeah. because you bought all those players; they're all rookies. And the I fact mean, who is, who we got here? And the fact is, is that, yeah, right. Rishi, Rishi Rice, Rice yeah, yeah. who, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, look. But he's not arrested, though. So. He's not. Yeah. But look at the, all right, so here's an example. And I'm not going to use names because I just, I like the guy and I wish yeah. him, I wish him oh, well. Yeah, I hope he but there's a quarterback in Arizona. Oh, just fucking um, that used to, that, I'm sorry, that used to be in Arizona. That I think Jay Plummer? A, that, that I think he's now a backup in Dallas, if I'm not mistaken. But um, Who's the he's guy? a backup of a backup somewhere now. Who is it? Just say his fucking you name. You can't remember? No, <laughs> That's I can't. What, he was a 2021. That was, oh, was a, a Trey, rookie. Uh, Trey Lance? Trey Lance. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. He busted it. He broke his leg really bad. Trey Lance. Look, you had Trey Lance in that draft. You had um, Justin, Justin Fields was in that draft. Oh, yeah. They're not still. He's still. Yeah, yeah, Kenny Pickett was. Kenny Pickett, Pickett, Pickett was yeah, in that draft. Yeah, yeah. You've got all these people that were. They were all these fantastic outlooks. CJ Stroud, Bryce Young. Fantastic outlook. Al uh, Anthony Richardson, fantastic outlook. The fact is, any one of these guys could have a career-ending injury game one of this next season, and their cards go to value of nothing. No. So there's still a risk. This is this is for this is for fun for money. That's the way we do it. For would fun you, for money. Last little bit for the audience. Would you consider this making a you know, would would you would you advise somebody to make it their full time gig? If you've got the money to invest up front, yes. And how much sure. money? Um, I mean, I would say just like you were thinking about opening a store, you'd probably want to start with 100 to 200 grand in the bank oh, wow. to start with because you'd want to invest in a wide range of products that can make you the money you need to make to pay your bills every month on top of everything else. Well, there you go, guys. Thank you, Chris Ellis, for coming in. Funko Chases on eBay. Check them out. Uh, you know, we really, I mean, I love talking about this and we really enjoyed it. Make sure that you check out Ho Happy Hour Holidays. We just got a new logo. Check out our new logo. We're doing Friday features. We love doing this. Keep following. Keep liking the page and vote for us for Best of the Bay and have an awesome day. Peace out. And just last thing. CJ Stroud, let's go, baby. Make that money, boy.